Hey everyone, welcome to today's episode. My apologies first for pushing the episode uh, late uh, on the start of a weekday. I uh, wasn't feeling well over the weekend so it got delayed. But anyways, let's get started. So t- today I'll be talking about SSPM or SaaS Security Posture Management. Uh, now, SSPM platforms essentially look at security posture of SaaS applications. That's the most simplest definition and as you can imagine from the word itself. Uh, essentially, they scan the SaaS applications for misconfiguration, unused uh, user account, or any issues with the uh, identities and user accounts uh, in the SaaS application, uh, including excessive user permission, any uh, malicious content getting uploaded, etc. So, essentially, the, any threats that uh, are uh, that pose or any threats that pose a risk to the SaaS application itself. So, essentially, if I have to talk, talk about use cases, it would be threat detection and activity monitoring, SaaS misconfiguration analysis, as well as compliance, because compliance mandate you to look for security issues in your IT infrastructure. Okay. Now, why do we need SSPM? It's simply because the number of SaaS application is growing many fold uh, today. So there are currently over 30,000 SaaS companies serving millions of customers today. And the source of this data is essentially from uh, multiple reports. But two sources I want to thank is a report uh, from Statista and another one from Ascendi Tex um, that came out in May 2023. Now, these reports essentially tell you how the SaaS uh, landscape looks like. But if you look at the top vendors in the SaaS uh, companies today, it would be Microsoft with around 11% market share, followed by Salesforce, SAP, Oracle, Google. Okay, uh, And on an average, the number of apps used in enterprise is 130. I was surprised when I saw this number, but it is what it is. Then I started looking into my history of apps that I've been using over years and I realized, yes, this number could be real. If I'm, I'm part of the sales and solutioning team, uh, I use multiple apps for various reasons in the, in the uh, profile uh, where I work. And similarly, there are different departments who could be using apps that are relevant to them. So this number makes sense. Okay. Now, also, the, uh, the report stated that around 70% of the company software use is presently attributed to SaaS and, and this number would reach 85% by 2025, which means more SaaS applications will be adopted by the enterprises. Okay. Now, if the SaaS application usage is growing, what does that mean? Okay. It means the security issues related to those SaaS applications will also grow. In fact, Gartner predicts that more than 99% of cloud breaches will be attributed to preventable misconfiguration or mistakes by end users through 2025. And I'm sure SaaS applications are part of it. Today, a lot of corporate data as well as personal data is stored in SaaS applications. Hence, it is very important that a SSPM platform is used by the enterprise to understand and to be able to understand the security issues and to be able to prevent these security issues. Okay, so a misconfiguration or a breach in the SaaS application itself could lead to low data loss, financial loss, or fines. Okay, so SSPMs help you reduce your attack surface by continuously looking for uh, the bad stuff on your uh, SaaS infrastructure. So that's the simplest uh, definition of SSPM. But let's uh, dig deeper. So how these uh, technologies work is essentially they are deployed as a uh, SaaS service. Whatever vendors I've looked into, uh, I found that there are around 60 or 70 vendors available in this uh, domain today. And uh, these uh, products are either available as an API or a proxy based solution. Essentially what that means is they are reading all the traffic that's going to internet. Uh, to get visible to into all the applications that, that are getting accessed by the employees. Okay, So they're continuously doing an app discovery and analysis of these apps. They also provide an API mechanism where they can integrate further into the API of these apps and do this uh, scan, uh, uh, which means they have an app catalog or connectors or integrations that are available in the platform uh, 
to do uh, the analysis so the data that they collect is typically uh, around uh, that uh, uh, app so it includes data stored in that app particularly so these example i'm just giving you some common examples like office 65 sfdc uh, works uh, workday any other uh, hr platforms darwin box etc etc all these apps um, will get scanned some of the collaboration apps like teams zooms etc or any corporate application that provides an api will be scanned and they will get uh, so sspm platforms will get the configuration state of these applications access logs what integrations are done with third party applications for example workday has multiple integrations or plugins available you can call them add-ons similarly conquer which is an expense management app that i've been using across all the companies that i work for it integrates with another application called tripit it makes my job easy but essentially an a saas app talking to another saas app as well as any third party plugins that are used by the saas apps so sspm platforms get this data they also get identity and access in, um, information including permission user account etc okay now this is the data get that that gets uh, uh, captured so a summary sspm collects data that is typically stored in that app configuration state of the app as well as access of this app configuration state would include the current config and user account in in those apps so example in office 65 would would include how many mailboxes are present how many super users admins locations etc all that data will be captured by the sspm platform so in terms of components as you can imagine there's a app catalog or in, which contains integration connectors there's a reputation engine which essentially is the vendor provided engine that uh, has a database or repository of known good known bad application it has a policy engine so that policy engine could use a simple rule based uh, approach or could be an aml based approach where it is continuously monitoring the app uh, the activity of uh, integrated saas applications in terms of who's accessing what they're trying to do uh, you know trying to build a baseline of normal behavior versus an outlier which is hey this app is almost uh, accessed by 19% of the user in this uh, mode and suddenly there is a different mode so example a user comes with a uh, you know a root account he is always used this uh, uh, account as or this username as a standard user but today is coming as a root account or a super admin it seems like an anomaly let me report that uh, as an outlier or an alert right so the policy engine also looks into drip detection which is essentially unauthorized configuration changes or deviation from the baselines that are defined by the corporate it looks into im users permissions over permissions etc what type of content is getting uploaded on the uh, app is it con containing a bad uh, known malware uh, is it uh, containing some sensitive keyword which should not be posted there it, okay, is it containing some pi data or a card payment data with but it's not a pci uh, app etc so the you know policy engine could be flexible and then the the platform could have remediation workflow so basic things like alerting and notifications for outlier or it could be integration with a ticketing platform a collaboration platform like slack slack uh, to carry out uh, investigation and also sometimes a self remediation uh, engine uh, which could carry out the complete response uh, based on predefined workflows so example if an account is found with a root privileges uh, and it was never uh, it is not a known account automatically disable that account and send a notification to the security team now just giving an example and then the standard functions of uh, dashboard and reporting for specific users or enterprise wide uh, usage application wide usage compliance specific incident based trends etc okay so those components exist in the sspm platform okay so in summary what we have discussed so far is sspm platforms or solutions they integrate with saas applications they collect data they read the configuration state they collect the real time data to compare uh, the current state with the best practice vendor recommended state and then you can initiate workflows to remediate some of these issues okay now this is how the technology works now let's address some of the 
questions that I often get from uh, various people that I interact with. So most, a lot of people ask me, is it a cloud security use case, application security use case, or infra security use case? See, uh, what I've been uh, reading is, uh, depending on the analyst and vendors, they put either would put it in a cloud security use case or an or infra sec use case. So SASE vendors, for example, commonly put this in infra sec use case. Uh, analysts I've seen putting them in a cloud security uh, use case. Now, for my understanding, this. Is, uh, or what I believe is infra security use case because SaaS applications are part of the IT infra and it's all about uh, finding the attack surface and apps are part of IT infra, hence this should be an infra security use case. Okay. Uh, then the second question I often get is SSPM versus CASB. So CASB is cloud access uh, security broker. This is a technology that uh, started uh, I think five or six years back, if I remember correctly, and uh, what this does is again works in a proxy mode where it looks into what applications are getting access uh, in the corporate. It started with a mo mostly like visibility, and then uh, we uh, or the industry added uh, DLP capabilities to understand what's happening uh, in terms of data loss in this app, uh, and uh, then. CASB vendors also started adding SSPM capability. So CASB vendors st started with very high level. Hey, I want to control what applications are getting access, who can access it, okay? So they are SaaS aware, they are application aware, they can differentiate between users. You can build policy, track users, and uh, do the same things that you would typically do on a, in a firewall, but more focused towards application side. Today, firewalls come with, you know, add-on CASB capabilities, which have a, port agnostic, IP agnostic, app agnostic view of detecting the, the applications. Uh, and uh, SSPM complements CASB. Okay, so today a lot of uh, CASB providers are adding SSPM capability. So they're not charging separately for it, but they are adding that capability because SSPM complements what CASB has been doing. Okay. Now, also another question is, uh, what is the difference between SSPM and uh, SASE slash SSE? Secure Access Service Edge or Security uh, Services Edge. So uh, SSE for those people who are hearing for it for the first time, this is essentially infra security products uh, offered as a SSE, most common being uh, Firewall as a Service, uh, VPN or ZTNA, uh, Secure Web Gateway, etc. Uh, so essentially, instead of companies hosting their own infrastructure to meet the cyber security use case or infra security use case, uh, this is provided as a SaaS service and uh, enterprises route their traffic to these uh, specific service providers and uh, then they use the console provided by this by the security services or, or uh, providers to just make policies and infrastructure management is not part of the end users or the enterprise scope okay so SSPM versus SASE SSPM is part is essentially a use case in SASE now it is part of infrasix uh, and hence it is a use case within the SSE world. Uh, then another one is SSPM versus CSPM, Cloud Security Posture Management, which is commonly used in the cloud security world. So in case enterprises are using cloud for ma making uh, their own applications, managing these applications or any other thing on the cloud side, CSPMs scan the cloud infrastructure for any configuration issues and their remediation. So CSPM CSPM is equivalent of the SSPM on the cloud side. Okay, so for a company that that's using SaaS applications and their own cloud, which a lot of large enterprises do, uh, they will use both the products. For companies that don't have their own uh, cloud service providers, uh, uh, they don't need CSPM. They won't use CSPM, but typically they would use one or two, or you know, in fact more. You remember the number one thirty? So they would use more. Uh, SSPMs, okay, for understanding the uh, the issues or security issues in the SaaS application. Okay, now why SSPM now? Uh, as security is move is uh, moving towards SaaS, a lot of these a lot of the security products are now available as a SaaS, uh, and more SaaS applications are getting adopted by business. I think it's important that. Uh, SSPM uh, it becomes a key part of our learning. Uh, 
SSP will have to use SSPM. It will take center stage. There are dedicated companies that that have been doing SSPM now for a few years. But if you look at the total addressable market, it is estimated to be around uh, 10.6 billion dollars by 2028. So decent amount of revenue. Uh, what that means is more vendors will get created, existing vendors will get acquired, and this market is going to explode. Okay. So it's important for us security practitioners to learn more about SSPM and in any other new technologies as they become uh, center stage or as they get to evolve. With that, I'm so thankful for all the sources of uh, these reports. I'm thankful to all of you who listen to this podcast. Uh, I keep getting questions from a lot of people. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Like, share and subscribe with your friends if you like the content so that it's picked by the algorithm on uh, various uh, mediums and more people learn from it with that thank you so much i'll see you next time